War of words between Moscow and Kiev is getting more heated amid an escalation in fighting in eastern Ukraine. Russia is accusing the Ukrainian forces of being used as a proxy for NATO to contain Moscow. We often say the Ukrainian army, the Ukrainian army. Who's fighting really? In fact, the official armed forces are part of the troops fighting in the east, and the so-called national volunteer battalions make up the considerable number of forces. In fact, this isn't an army, it's a foreign legion. In this case, a foreign NATO legion that of course doesn't seek Ukraine's national interests. There are other geopolitical objectives to contain Russia that don't concur with the national interests of the Ukrainian nation. Putin says that Kiev does not want to get the conflict in eastern Ukraine solved through political means. He says the Ukrainian authorities backed off when they saw the militias fighting back intensively. The Russian leader stressed that what's happening now in Ukraine is a tragic civil war. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian authorities are refusing from a peaceful resolution of the conflict in the east. They don't want to resolve it politically. First, they use security organs then the security service and the army afterwards. Unfortunately, Kiev used a peaceful reprieve exclusively for reinforcement and began again. Thousands of people have already been killed. This, of course, is a real tragedy. In essence, a civil war is going on in Ukraine, and as I understand, many in Ukraine understand this. More than 5,000 people have been killed in nine months of armed conflict in eastern Ukraine. Kiev accuses Moscow of invading the country's east by sending thousands of troops. Russia denies the allegation. Fred Weir, journalist and political commentator, joins us from uh, Moscow to tell us his thoughts on this. Well, Fred Weir, I'm glad that I uh, get to talk to you on a weekly basis about this. It's my pleasure. Uh, what do you think about what uh, Vladimir Putin has said uh, at this point? Uh, doesn't he, uh, by some of the words that he said, show uh, that he is somewhat involved in this conflict? Well, yes, um, he is, and I, I think there's simply no denying that Russia has been involved from the beginning. Um, but on the other hand, I, th I think it's true that Ukraine is facing a civil war. There, it is a divided country, and this is the fundamental problem. Uh, others are stirring the pot. Russia points the finger at NATO, NATO points the finger at Russia, and, and they're both partly right. Um, but I do think that uh, the people who would like to find a negotiated solution uh, to this are mainly in Moscow and Brussels. Uh, in Ukraine, I think both sides are girding for war. Uh, it's perfectly clear that in Kiev, uh, they've announced a mobilization. Uh, it's been, the strategy has been all along in Kiev not to recognize any kind of demands from the separatists in the east, but just to bide their time, build up their military forces. Uh, Poroshenko, president of Ukraine, announced a big mobilization last week to add 50,000 new troops by this spring. They're clearly uh, just wait, biding their time and waiting until they have enough strength to crush the rebellion in blood. Um, and in, in the east, uh, the rebels, uh, have decided, I think, that um, they are going to move now while Ukraine is still weak. Uh, so you have two forces there on the ground who see only a military solution. Uh, and their sponsors or their putative sponsors in the West and the East uh, really don't have control over them. What do you think is going to turn that around in order to avoid an escalation, uh, given the facts that what we're looking at is pointing to that direction? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, um, I, I don't know how much leverage Moscow has over the rebels in Donetsk and Luhansk. Um, you know, there are many different opinions about that, uh, but they clearly don't have full control over them. Um, and it's also not clear how much control or sway the West, uh, Washington and Brussels have over uh, the, the government in Kiev, because if they have enough, they, can, they, they should be able to bring those two sides to a bargaining table with a realistic uh, program for, you know, for reshaping Ukraine, I don't know, for um, creating a, a new constitutional 
uh, order that would satisfy both sides. I, I, this is all theoretically possible, but right now it, it doesn't seem to be what either uh, the government in Kiev or the rebels in Donetsk and Luhansk uh, are, are willing to do. Thank you very much for that. Fred Weir, journalist and political commentator.